so um, I was originally going to talk about branding, but I realized I was following that, and I decided to have a little bit more fun today. I'm going to talk to you about my wish list for the game industry, and I'm going to do it by way of five insults and one secret. Now, before I start, I've noticed that in talks I've given in the past, the press seems to look for me to use one off-colored word, and they'll dig way deep to find it. So I'll make it easy. I said fuck in the first sentence. You can put that in the headline. The second thing that I've noticed is a lot of the bloggers seem to remember that I used to run a very big game company, and they, they hold me accountable for some grievance in a game they lost some years past. I apologize. Um, I don't know what it was, but I will read your comments. But now, who am I going to insult? I'm going to start with a few, and I'll let you know all of them. But I'm going to insult pretty much the console game companies. I'm going to insult all the major console and PC game publishers. I'm going to insult mobile game developers and publishers. I'm going to criticize and insult the advertising networks. And I'm going to insult the gaming press. So it's just about everybody. And if I've left you off the list, I apologize. I've only got 15 minutes. I'm not, you know, can't get to everybody. So with that, I'm going to move on to the wishes, the five things that I wish were different about the game industry today. Um, relatively straightforward ideas, all ideas that I think might resonate with some of you. The first wish that I have is that the console companies would stop pretending that the next generation, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, is about package goods. Um, the disc at retail is, a, is really an outgrowth of a distribution model that was born in the 1980s and is in the process of dying now. Um, we made the games the way we did because we needed to sell them through a retail store to our customers. It's still going to be about big games, but it's going to be these games sliced and diced, bought in pieces, bought in subscription, bought through microtransactions, sometimes bought premium, additions to them, subscriptions to them. There'll be small games and snacks, not just meals. Now, I understand that there is an audience of consumers out there that are demanding that Microsoft and Sony do things the way they've always done them. Support the second sale model. You know, don't go to the always on model. Don't do authentication. Make sure that I'll always have my desk. Guys, I'll give you a simple promise. They will get over it. The future is coming. It is not about the disk. It is not about the big thing all at once. It's about entering the 21st century with what is always on, instant on, instantly available, added to, and managed like a live service. The tradition of this industry is over now and forever. And the customers that are complaining loudly will get over it. The second wish that I have would be for the game press. Stop asking the question, will mobile kill console? Let's think about it for just a second. The tablet that I've got in my coat back there is 25 times smaller than the television I have in my house to play games on. It's a touch screen versus a controller. And when I'm playing a console, I'm 10 feet away from the content. When I'm playing a console, it's right there in front of me, about 18 inches away. They are fundamentally, in an every way imaginable, different experiences. Well, I don't believe one substitutes for another. Now, I can hear the press right now. What I'm sure they're thinking or wanting to tell me I should be thinking is that, come on now, the next generation of tablets is going to have CPUs and GPUs as powerful as what we see in console today. They're going to want to talk about screen resolution. They're going to say, we're going to have a 500 gig iPad or Nexus tablet. And there'll be wireless HDMI out. I can plug a controller into my tablet and put the game off my tablet onto a TV. Well, yes, all of that is, in fact, true. But that doesn't mean console is over. It means that Google, Apple, and Samsung have joined the business of making games to be played on a controller on your television. Or put another way, it means they've joined the console business. It'll be the best thing that could ever happen. Now, I'm not suggesting console wins or mobile wins. I think they're both super vibrant markets. 
But the idea that one kills the other is just a silly question. And I seem to see it at every conference like this and every magazine. It's just one that needs to die a death and go away. Now, the third um, wish that I have is for the console game makers, the big PC game makers, take some big risks. Now, before I start insulting these guys, I'll start with a compliment. Think about the fact that Mario is 34 years old, that Madden is 25 years old, that FIFA is 20 years old, that The Sims is 13 years old, that um, titles like Battlefield are 13 years old, Assassin's Creed's over a decade. And think about this. Half of the brands I've just mentioned have generated over $10 billion in revenue. $10 billion in revenue. I took the trouble to add up the total dollar volume of all time, of every mo major movie franchise, every book, of the 10 biggest intellectual properties in the history of entertainment, no fewer than five come from the game industry. That's stunning. So we should feel good about that. But now, let's get real. The, we've been building on platforms since the day of Atari and putting big disks or big cartridges in the home for play. Nothing is the same as it was. The models for pricing are changing. Always on means a fundamental and radical change in the way we're going to interact with our content. And design needs to change. You know, my point of view is, if you're building a single-player game that looks like the single-player game of 10 years ago, you're probably doing the wrong thing. And now is the time to change. We've got these new consoles coming. And let's keep in mind that the top 10 games, design-wise, look a lot like they did five and seven years ago. We're going to have to take some risks that we haven't taken in the past to deal with the opportunity that's in front of us. Or those great brands that we all know aren't going to exist in half a decade or in 10 years. Now, for my fourth witch, I've got two audiences that I'm addressing. One is the game marketeers, the guys that work inside of a Supercell or a Rovio or a Activision or an Ubisoft. And the other are the analytics guys and the tools makers that support all the microtransaction and ad exchanges. Now, what I want to encourage here is move beyond the quantitative. But let me start by saying, I'm addressing this time, the marketers and the analytics guys, that when you really look at it, there's absolutely nothing possible if you don't master the math, you don't master the science. If you don't understand your customer engagement, if you don't understand the lifetime value, you don't understand the cost to acquire, you don't understand the cost per install and how you relate those factors. But it's by no means enough Nobody is going to create a great marketing campaign, and nobody is going to create a great new title if they're staring at a spreadsheet. So yes, master the math, but get your homework done early enough to think about the big ideas that will make a difference, the new designs, the new marketing campaigns, things that go viral because they're just good ideas, not that they go viral because you bought a bunch of ads on an ad exchange and manage to pay for each one of those installs. Now, the other guys I want to address with get beyond the quantitative and the way we do things today are the ad exchanges and the others that support all the content makers. We have a problem in our industry. One problem is discovery. We can't just get discovery from the Apple platform and the, you know, the Play Store and the App Store or even on Facebook. So go build better systems for content discovery. Build things that do a better job in a less expensive way to get to the CPI. And build things that will give us a decent measure of market share, because most of us are flying in the dark. The services industry needs to step up and do more, not just another analytics graph. Fundamental discovery, fundamental improvements of install rates and cost, and fundamental market share reporting. We need to build all this stuff. My fifth and last wish is for the mobile developers and publishers. I want them to build brands. Now, I hope that five and 10 years from now, somebody's going to be standing on the stage and taking titles, you know, I don't know if it's Candy Crush or Clash of Clans or Simpsons Tapped Out or a hundred other products that are doing well in mobile. 
but talking about them in their 10th year and their 15th year and their $10 billion mark and their $15 billion mark. But right now, I don't see enough going on to believe that's going to happen. So here's the challenge that I'm trying to put out what I wish was happening. Discontinuous innovation. Let me describe what I mean. So two of the top titles in the world, Candy Crush and Clash of Clans, they challenged existing incumbents with very similar designs. Clash of Clans, Backyard Monsters, Candy Crush, Bejeweled. They looked at those products and said, they're managing an ongoing business. They're having to manage the lifetime value of their customer. They have to manage engagement. So we're going to fundamentally innovate and make something that leapfrogs them. And guess what? They did, and they occupied the top of the charts. I can assure you, people at King and people at Supercell, people are looking at your titles in exactly that same way. So here's the challenge. You're trying to manage lifetime value. You're trying to manage engagement. It's a minute to minute, a second to second, an hour to hour engagement. It's very hard to do something that risks your existing audience by being so bold and so different and so innovative that it challenges your user in a new way, the way a competitor would challenge you. But if you do not do that, you will eventually be replaced and we will have products and not brands. We won't be talking about the, your creations a decade from now because they'll be somebody else's. So my challenge here for all of the people that make these things, be bolder and recognize you're going to have to take a risk of losing your existing users to challenge them and take them to a new place unless you want to be left at the curb by somebody else that will do that for you. Now, I said my talk was about five wishes and one secret. So what's the secret? The secret is most everyone here knows everything I said. They just don't say it very often. And the point that I wanted to make and why I'm saying this stuff is I want to give a little bit of cover, a little bit of support for the bold players inside the dev teams, inside the analytics teams, inside the marketing departments, inside the press, to do these bold teams when your bosses or superiors are telling you they want you to regurgitate yesterday's ideas. A little bit of cover for pushing on areas that are fundamental. I think this is the best time in the history of the game industry. It's a golden age, but only if we're bold enough to do the things that will deliver it. Thank you, everyone, and have a wonderful slush.